Chris Rock and Roller Jenkins. How's it going, Chris? All right, but just done a session now. And then just another session tight, really. Uh, we last seen you Chris in November against uh, Phil Sutcliffe. Uh, talk to us about that fight. Um, we had, we, I was in camp and right, because I was meant to be boxing in Cardiff, but the candy show got cancelled. Um, and then Gary had a phone call in regarding the fight. We took the fight last minute. It went. You know what I mean? They weren't a fight that I weren't not I would happy I would not happy take I'd let you know a fight anyone. So I took the fight, I felt good. We had two and a half week notice for the grafting. Um and then basically I went out there, I got pinged in the first round. It's more to do with footwork than actual power of a punch. But you know what I mean? He put me in my ass, I got up, I rocked him in the first round of the body shot. Um I thought I won the fight. I took over after round four or five, I took over proper. Even though I was winning probably the last two minutes of every round, he was winning the first one minute, but that was the tactics. And I think they show a different side of my boxes since I've been up here with Gary. And so I'm not just a fight that I can actually box. And I come out that fight with no cuts, no bruises. Um, so yeah, I was pleased with my performance, but I was pissed off with basic, you know, not having the decision I thought I deserved. As you said, going into that fight, two weeks notice, and I think uh, a year's in inactivity. Do you think that was, uh, you know? Well, I'm not going to say it was the two weeks notice because I was still in camp anyway. You know, I'd been in camp for about four weeks, training hard. Um, I, I, I went out in a piss on a Sunday. Or I had a session on Sunday. Guys phoned me on Monday. The fight in for two weeks. I was like, oh shit, I'm going over to hell. Wait to be. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, uh, you know, that's the thing, see. Um, I don't say it, but basically, my ex manager kind of thing was kind of like, it wouldn't keep me as busy as, busy as I wanted to be. You know what I mean? Uh, but hopefully, you now everything is going on. And the guy, you know, look, uh, um, my coach, he's got loads of contacts as well. I can just keep a momentum going, you know, not like. Not like I have a box year and a box next year, box the year after, you know. It's no good for nobody. It's like in any sport, you know. If the top level in rugby, football, if they miss in eight or nine games, they're not going to come back. Play like they've done and they were there. So, yeah, I'm just, just focusing. Um, if you had a, a good training camp and uh, maybe a fight or two before the Sackler fight, do you think things would have been different? I thought they won the fight anyway. But, yeah, obviously, you know, you don't know. Now, I'm not one to dwell in the past, you know, probably with spilt milk. It's happened now. No ifs, buts, you know what I mean? No, it's life, innit? Move on. Uh, a rematch, Chris, is that something you'd like with him? Um, he's going for some title now. I think it's the IBF International or something like that he's going for. So, no, leave him get on with it, you know. If, if, if our paths cross again, I'll happily jump at the, at the fight. But, you know, I just need to... Get myself now back if he wins and then get back into some position to fight for some sort of title. And uh, moving on, yeah, you're back in action this month. Uh, talk to us about that. Um, yeah, um, Mo Pryor, my new manager um, from Bethnal Green, York Hall, London, uh, down our way. He's, he's kind of, you know, the shows have really been a Swansea or regular, you know, you've got the Sandigas doing well for Cardiff Newport. Bristol, you know, but I think most going to get some shows in Swansea. Get a good fan base down there. Um, it's May the 13th in the Bram Hall in Swansea. Tickets are 30 pound and 60 pound. Um, I'm obviously fighting on there. Zach from the gym's fighting on there. Manu Lee's fighting on there. Dale Evans is fighting on there. Um, and there's a few more other boys, and I'm not really sure. But you know, get 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 your wallets out there. You know. Come and support, get boxing back in Swansea. You know, because people find it hard, especially from the Swansea Valley's Carmarthen, they find it hard to get up to Cardiff to travel up, have a ticket, and travel home. You know, Swansea's local for some people. You know, buy a ticket now and I can see boxing. You know, it's that thriving down there. You'll have shows every couple of months down there. Yeah, you got some uh, talented boys down that way, as you just mentioned. 
Um, with regards to like uh, a fan base, Chris, you obviously started off well, and then you're in activity. Is that hard to keep up the fans and you know selling tickets and the support stuff like that? Hundred percent. I think when I was boxing in Swansea regular, I had very good fan base. I don't call them fans. My friends, you know. Yeah. No, no one's a fan. You know, the only fan you have is blows cold air, new, but they support. They, you know, they're loyal people. That's what I call them. You know, they're spending hard doing money. They're working hard, and they they wouldn't come to the show. But obviously, with the nurse situation where like the fight was delayed for six, eight months and all this and that, fights getting cancelled, and it's like people booking hotels to come to Cardiff and they lose money. And obviously, they're gonna lose. You know, they're not gonna risk it. You know. And now it's local, you know, the, the fan base is coming, I think I've sold about 70 tickets plus, I'm hoping to get about 100 out, you know what I mean, so I just want to thank everyone who's bought a ticket off me really. Yeah, and uh, people watching this now, if they think, oh, no, I want to go down and watch this fight, you know, how can they get all the tickets from you? Uh, contact me on Twitter, at Chris Rockin, or Facebook me, um, I got a joint account with my wife, um, Chris Jenkins on that. Just basically call, give Gary a ring, give any of the boys a ring, Man or Zach. You know, just come out, support the lads, and that's all we can really say. Yeah, and uh, obviously not looking to pass the opponent of this of this fight, but uh, you know, what what's the plan for the rest of the year? Um, and obviously I'm fighting May the thirteenth. I got a little holiday book with the family. You know, I need to get away. The, you know, the wife indoors. She she does a lot. She's the one who's always got the children, and I'm training. She's. She's like, um, I don't know, she's like the cement relationship in the marriage. Um, so I'm nice to have a break with them and then as soon as I come back, push on for some sort of title shop at the end of the year. But, you know, I need to get the momentum in, I need to get the wins in, you know, and then, then we can look about to win, chasing for these titles that I think I should be, you know, fighting for. Yeah. What have you actually got to do to get this title shop? Because, like, it seems to me that you're one of the most avoided fighters, in, you know, in the country. Uh, basically, I've lost my last two. You know, last one I don't think I lost. The one before his nurse it was tighter for the nickname, but that's life, you know. But um, basically, as soon as you get a few wins, your rankings go up, and then all of a sudden, then you get put in a position to fight either a mandatory or someone takes us voluntary. You know, so I just basically got to get a few wins. It's mm. so all I can do. I know you said you lost these last two, but you're at the level where you're so dangerous and you're more incapable of beating these fighters. Is, is that why you know they're trying to avoid it, you think? Yeah, but some fighters won't take the fight, you know, because mm-hmm. I, I am meant to be dangerous, but you know, I can't, I can't break a fucking paper bag, you know what I mean? His hands are funny hands. <laughs> no, but on a serious note, you know, some people must, you know, it, it makes me feel good because some people don't want to fight me, but then it does also piss me off because it's a boxing game, you know, it's Mano versus Mano, do you know what I mean? It's man against man, you know, best man is, but you know, some fighters like that, but I just, I'll have to, if I have to do the hard route, I'll do it for another few years and see what it goes. Yeah. And before we go, Chris, anyone you want to thank or anything? Um, obviously, I want to thank um, number one home improvements. Adrian Williams is a good friend of mine. They've been, you know, they've been there from basically day one. And without them, I would have walked away from boxing probably last year. Um, also, um, back on track, sports is your JT Saps. Um, what else have we got in there? We've got, I don't know, I've got a good few little, little sponsors, you know what I mean? But everyone knows if a fitness studio in Ponte del Rey, that's a gym I use a lot. You know, thank you them guys. But it's just, I just want to thank everyone who's sticking by me kind of thing and, and, you know, in this shit time. But yeah. And uh, a quick prediction for your fight? I'm just going to showcase what I've been learning up in Gary's. You know, people saying that, you know, oh, you, you shouldn't have done this, shouldn't have done that. Uh, we'll show how much of an improvement I am surrounding myself, like Sir Liam Williams, Alex Hughes, Zach Mano, all of us. Uh, you know, we say, they say um, success breeds success. You know, and I'm seeing the difference in me, not just in the boxing, but as a person as well. Right, well, Chris, uh, thank you very much for talking to us and uh, all the best come fight night. Thank you, John. I just want to say thank you too as well for the interview. It's been a long time. <laughs> Cheers, bye.